Hello, in this lecture we're going to look at the Master Budget Part 6, Budgeted Balance Sheet. If you haven't taken a look at the other five, you might want to take a look at those first because we will be using components of those in order to compile the balance sheet. At the end of this, we will be able to list components of the Master Budget and compile the Budgeted Balance Sheet. This is going to be the components here. We started with the sales budget. We need to do it in this order. Sales budget. Then we have the production budget. And then the production budget will be used to make the direct materials budget, the direct labor budget, the overhead budget, as well as the capital expenditures budget, the selling and administrative budget. Then we're going to have the cash budget. Then we can put together the statements, the balance sheet budget, and the budgeted income statement, as well as the cash flow. We also had some other worksheets in order to calculate the income statement. We wanted to calculate the cost of goods sold. And in order to do that, we needed to have the cost of goods uh, manufactured. So that's going to be the process that we're going through in this case. And this one, we're going to focus in on the balance sheet, putting a lot of the stuff together in terms of the balance sheet. Remember when we think about the budget, we often think about the income statement, how we're gonna perform over time. The balance sheet is gonna be where we are at as of the end of that point in time. Where, where are we gonna be standing once the budget time period is over in terms of a balance sheet perspective. All right, so we've done this so far. We've already done the sales budget. That's number one, step one we did. Step two, we used that to do the production budget. Then we had the raw materials budget, the direct materials budget, and then the factory overhead budget, the selling expense budget, the general and administrative expense budget. We used that to create the cash budget here, and then the uh, budgeted cost of goods manufactured so that we can get the cost of goods manufactured number that we would then use to calculate the cost of goods sold number. We used that to then calculate the income statement. So we've done all that so far. We're going to bounce back and forth to some of these items in order to use them to create the balance sheet. The point we are at at the end of the time period, of course. So balance sheet at the end of our budgeted time period. Where do we stand after this time period that we are budgeting for? This quarter is ended. That's what we're looking at. We're going to have the assets will be the current assets. We're going to start off with cash. Cash will be... Uh, coming from the cash budget. So cash budget, we have the 40000 That's where this 40000 is here. Don't confuse that with the 40000 at the beginning of last time's balance sheet. So this is the balance sheet uh, last uh, the, at the end of last period, which is, of course, the beginning numbers for this period. The reason it's the same is because, remember, that's our minimum balance. So it happens to be that we needed to take out a loan to get to 40000 and because that's our minimum balance. So don't get confused that that's the same 40. It's not the same 40. Uh, this is the beginning 40. This is the ending 40. The reason they're the same is because we made it the same in order to keep our minimum balance at 40 by taking out a loan. In this case, the loan at the end for that 8,160. All right, then we got the accounts receivable. We're going to have to do a bit of a calculation to figure out what the ending balance in the accounts receivable is. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the beginning receivable which is going to come from last time's uh, accounts receivable. So we had the balance sheet as of the end of last period, which is, of course, the beginning of this period at uh, 342, 248. That's where we start. And then we're going to add to that the credit sales. So we're going to have to figure out what the credit sales are. A problem is going to have to give you that. In real life, we're going to have to, of course, estimate that. In this case, the problem said that we have 1,447,200 in sales given by the sales budget here so here's the sales budget giving us this number here and we said that 70 percent of that the problem said was going to be on account therefore those are sales that are going to increase accounts receivable so here's where accounts receivable started then we had the sales on account increase in the receivable and then we have the cash collections from credit sales so we had to figure that out and we've done that in the past. We did that on the total cash receipts from customers calculation here. And so if we add these up, that's what we received in terms of cash. So of course that's gonna be what's reducing the accounts receivable. So if we take this and make it a bit larger like this, we're gonna say that the 342248 plus 346080 plus 329280 is gonna give us this uh, 1,017,608. And then if we do the calculation, we started off with 342248, people owing us money, plus 1013040. That's what increased the accounts receivable. Those are the sales on account, minus what people paid us. 
which was 101,708. And that should give us the ending balance of 337,680. 337,680. That's our ending receivable. So we got to go through a bit of a calculation to get that. That's where we're going to be at here on our balance sheet. There's the ending receivable. Next item, raw materials. We're going to take that from step three in our budget, which is the raw materials budget. And we're going to take the ending balance in terms of units here and multiply it times the 21 uh, per unit price. And that will give us our ending balance of the 84,000 in this case. So remember, what we're looking at is where we stand as of the end of the time period. That's what the balance sheet is in terms of the bud budget of balance sheet. So we're going to take our ending uh, amount here. That's what we're going to have on the balance sheet at the end of the time period. Then we've got the finished goods inventory. Finished goods inventory, we could take from the uh, cost of goods sold calculation where we have here. And this is going to be, have to be something that's given in the problem. It's going to have to be something that we will estimate in uh, real life, what's going to be in the ending finished goods inventory. And then if we add up the total current assets, then we can take out the calculator here. And that would be the 40,000 plus the 337680 plus the 8400 plus the 321360 gives us the 783040 that's our total current assets then we're going to have the equipment we're going to look in this is a property plant and equipment we can get that 